don't really know how to introduce this bullshit. So. Oh, I don't know. What, what is our name of this? Um, I was thinking legends and libations. This is very ballsy just jumping into it without like... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you do this. I feel thing. like I'm 25. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 26. Oh, just 26. My bad. I'm 20. I'm 30. Okay. <laughs> 20, 34. <laughs> this is the White River Monster. Um, so we're going to look at the history of sightings and then talk about some of the theories as to what this creature could actually be um, if it's not just a mysterious, unknown creature that we've never seen before. If you're in this area, the White River Monster, the White River is pretty amazing. So it's a pretty good name, the White River Monster. Yeah, I drive over the White River every day on the way to work. And too. I could definitely see there being some fucking monsters, <laughs> to be honest. It's creepy. I mean, all water bodies kind of freak me out. I don't think we know everything that's under the, under, in the water at all. Mm -mm, mm -mm. At all. Truly the final frontier. So, um, this all kind of starts out in the early 1900s when we have the very first sighting of the White River Monster. And it's actually in Branson. Uh, so the early history is a little bit murky, um, but legends about this took hold immediately once people started seeing weird things in the White River. Um, there are reports as early as the Civil War, interestingly. Um, so that's 1860s. Pretty lengthy amount of time. Yeah, and... Um, Allegedly, there was a boat in the White River that sunk. Um, it was a federal boat, so a Union boat. It was actually fired upon by a Confederate something on the shore, and that's how it actually sunk. Um, but some people were saying it was a White River monster, and... Hmm. I guess that would mean he was allied with the Confederates. <laughs> the first recorded sighting that we can clearly tie to the White River Monster um, came in December 1912 when timber workers that were shuttling cedar down the White River shared they had seen something super weird. They described the creature as a giant 300-pound turtle submerged on the riverbed downstream from Branson, Missouri. <laughs> I've never heard this. A giant turtle, which would be terrifying in itself. And there are some turtles that are pretty fucking giant. Yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering, too, if it's under the water, if you get that weird, like, magnification, so stuff looks It looks huge. Bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Or short and squatty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe not, like, as big as they really thought it was. But, um... This claim actually really intrigued fishermen and sportsmen, and they got super pumped and went out with a bunch of ropes and nets to try to capture this giant creature. Ballsy. Um, they, it's not known what actually happened. I'm guessing they didn't capture anything because there weren't any news reports about that um, later on. But 12 years later, in 1924, this good old gal named Ethel Smith and her family were vacationing along the White River when she spotted this creature. She said it was making a loud blowing noise, but never did show its head or tail. It was a terrible looking thing with a dingy gray crusted hide. It frightened me badly. What year was this? 1924. Oh, shit. Yeah. I assume that's how they talk. No, yeah, I, I would that. too. Um, others, interestingly, had reported super weird sounds as well, um, describing it as a combination of a cow's moo and a horse's neigh. That is weird because I've, I've heard some animals make some... Have you ever heard of a... What a... a the noise a fox makes? What does the fox say? <laughs> I mean, this one fox that I saw was like, I mean, it was like, have you ever heard a pig? Oh, yeah. And it's not like, a, it's like a scream. Yeah. They do. 
it's like that, but like a kind of noise. And so like, it's curious to me, like, I mean, there's obviously animals out there to me that I, we don't know what they are, but like, the noises that they make is all we have to go by. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, I've never heard that fox make a noise like that before, but I mean like, terrifying. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, especially pig squealing. It's not squealing, it's screaming. I mean, yeah. Screaming, it sounds like a person of some kind screaming for help. But it's just, it's weird that they're describing these um, noises that they're hearing in this time frame of, you know, era. Yeah. That to this day, I don't, I don't know anything that sounds like a cow and a horse. I mean, that sound that you just made was pretty close. Well, then we need to look at, start looking at foxes. <laughs> a, a river fox. Just <laughs> We just came up with, we just figured it out. Yeah. It's debunked. Um, so it, was, it actually wasn't until 1937 when another sighting really ushered in the big media frenzy for the White River Monster, and suddenly all eyes were on Newport, Arkansas, which is probably the... Newport, Arkansas? <laughs> it's probably the only time that's ever happened. <laughs> no joke. So this uh, plantation operator, um, Bramlett Bateman, had received a report from two of his sharecroppers, uh, D. Wyatt and his wife, who had spotted the creature. The Time Magazine article read, D. Wyatt popped his head out, took one look, and straight away headed for the home of Bramlett Bateman, nearest white farmer. He and his wife, he informed Farmer Bateman, had seen a monster. Neither of them had been drinking. Farmer Bateman skeptically stepped over to the river, then let out a whoop. <laughs> sure enough, there was a monster. As big as a boxcar and as slick as a slimy elephant without legs. I don't even know, I don't even know what I'm picturing in my head right now. I don't even know what. <laughs> yeah, that's very descriptive, but also not. It makes me so curious. It's like literally, what were the? Obviously, they're not just gonna be like, I'm making this up for fun. Like, what were these people seeing? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to picture myself. I've been in situations out in the woods hiking where I'm like, what is, th oh, okay, that's what that is. Yeah. Like, I would love to see the reaction in that time. Yeah, yeah. And one of the interesting things about pretty much all of these really early unknown animal cryptid sightings, people were a lot more connected to nature at that point. There's less distraction. Yeah. Electronic distraction. So you're working outside, you're playing outside, you're doing all this stuff outside, you should be a lot more aware of all the different animals mm -hmm. that exist. So this would have to be something they've never seen before. So they go on to um, report this to the authorities in Newport. Um, and the reason that Bateman did this was because he thought the creature was a threat to his crops. And he was wanting to actually put dynamite in the section of the river that he saw the creature in to try to blow it up. And um, he actually goes to the local game and fish um, officer and he's telling him his plan to blow up this monster. And obviously that was not <laughs> a lot of happening thing. <laughs> so he got shut down. Um, I just don't know why he would assume that the monster was a threat to his crops. Well, I think maybe because back then, like, that's what people relied on. And maybe any sort of animal that they're unaware of would be it's considered gonna a threat. jump out of the river and eat your soybeans. I mean, it, <laughs> it might if it does. It can't find any other source of food. I don't really know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think just back then, that's all they really had to, like, really worry about was, like, their crops. Yeah. Maybe you just want to blow shit up, too. a piece of it. Okay. We can take a break. Okay. So within a few days, word about this mysterious creature in the river um, spread and people kind of started rolling up to scope out the area and see if they could see the monster for themselves. So people were pretty skeptical. 
until July 7th when the plantation owner's report was actually corroborated by County Deputy Z.B. Reed, who was with Bateman during a sighting. It surfaces and the deputy said it looked like a large sturgeon or a catfish, which catfish obviously makes sense being a river. Pretty sure sturgeon are, I don't know, oceanic. I don't know what sturgeon are. I mean, I, I've heard of the name and I'm sure I know, but not coming to mind. Catfish, I know. Catfish are like a little, yeah. They're gross. And people go noodling. Basically, all you need is a big pair of hands and a big pair of bollocks. Oh, yeah. And noodling. Stick your hand in Oh, I hate it. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of interested. I'm kind of intrigued by it. This just feels so strange to your hand in a fucking hole waiting for fish to bite you so you can grab it by the gills. So, people started getting really worried about what this creature could be. Um, so much so that government officials actually started getting involved. And on July 12th, W.E. Phoenix, which I can't, I, I don't like saying this name. There's a park in Westport called Weenus. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm all about the name. Weenus. So, W.E. Phoenix was a state toll bridge collector, and he announced that he was going to make a big-ass net to try to catch the monster. This project only lasted a couple days because Phoenix wasn't able to get enough money or help to construct his giant net. Around the same time, the Newport Town Council actually asked the federal government to send a snag boat to help with the monster hunt. And I had no idea what a snag boat was. It definitely sounds made up, but apparently it's real. I feel like it sounds like someone snatches something up and runs away. Yeah, and that's pretty much what they do. <laughs> so a snag boat is a shallow boat which floats along rivers, removing log stumps. I thought maybe they could scoop up the monster or um, hit it and it would surface or something like that. Like he'd grab it, bop it up on the yeah. <laughs> So the U.S. snag boat, Tom Stallings, was sent on its way to Newport um, on July 17th, so five days after Phoenix's net. Um, the Newport Chamber of Commerce announced they would be hiring former Navy diver Charles B. Brown to search the bottom of the river. Um, Brown planned to dive for four days and apparently wasn't worried about what he was going to find down there. He actually said, I don't figure I'll need any extraordinary protection, but I'll carry some spears and be ready to get out of the way of anything if possible. He was convinced that the creature was just a fish, likely a giant catfish. Maybe it is an overly large, enlarged, yeah, like mutant catfish. My cat. Cat meows. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Um, Does it need something? No, she's just oh, okay. she's just nosy. Sorry. <laughs> At the same time, um, the Chamber of Commerce and plantation owner Bramlett Bateman, the guy who had some of the very first sightings of this creature, um, they were setting up to cash in on the sudden interest in the White River Monster. So they actually built a fence around an area on, I'm assuming, uh, Bramlett Bateman's land, put up a fence, um, and were charging people 25 cents a person to stand in this nice fenced-in area to try to see the monster and to watch the diver. Hmm. So, everybody has to get their cut. I mean, kind of smart. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Capitalism at its finest, right? So, they also were selling refreshments. They also set up a dance floor so people could entertain themselves while they waited for the monster to be pulled from the depths of the White River. Well, they're getting handy, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and um, they had posted... This is Arkansas, isn't it? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> So they posted signs all over town, um, pointing the way to the White River Monster, and the diver was getting ready to go down for the very first time. <laughs> you 
he was getting ready for his first descent. And the city actually called an unofficial holiday so everybody could be there to watch. So I think they were really anticipating something cool would happen. Um, hundreds of folks from the town and around Arkansas and even out of state came and were lined up along the banks I believe that. waiting for this. I mean, what else is happening? <laughs> Still today, what yeah. else is happening? <laughs> Especially in Newport. What else are you going to do? That's what this is the most exciting thing that's happened in decades, I'm sure. Um, so the first descent... drinking a drink. Oh, sorry. I, f I keep forgetting. Can't forget that. Mm. Most important. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really nutty. It is literally just like almost like her. it's gotta be that rum horchata. Yeah. It's very nutty. I like it. I love it. It tastes like I don't even know. It's got something familiar. I just can't, I can't literally yeah. can't taste it for horchata. Nutty. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon. Cinnamon nut. <laughs> so people are hanging around waiting. Look at my drink compared to your drink. I know. The first. I don't drink. <laughs> I'm talking too much, damn it. I don't know hard enough. So the first dive doesn't last very long. 75 minutes, he comes back up. Only 75 minutes are gonna search for that? Yeah. Well, I mean, keep in mind, this is like, wh where are we, 19? Yeah, but they have nothing else to do. Yeah, but 1937, diving, that sounds terrifying. True. Like another thing I've yet to do. I don't know what diving a diving apparatus looks like in nineteen thirty seven. Back then, yeah, no. But True story. Terrifying, I'm sure. I mean, even today, I'm not interested. And the reason more so today interested than then. Yeah. <laughs> the reason that it only lasted seventy five minutes is because they're in um, the White River, super muddy. It's after um, yeah an area uh, a time where there was a, a shit ton of rain, so. Visibility was only around three inches, which doesn't make it very uh, yeah. enjoyable or um, clear. And I know this guy's a Navy diver, but like that would be a little bit scary. So he he comes back up. Um, he decides to go down again later in the afternoon. And at one point, people got really pumped because they thought that he had spotted the monster that everybody was there to see. Um, Unfortunately, closer examination uncovered that the object was actually a dead hog floating downstream. Bloated. Yeah. And I've seen a dead cow in a river. I've seen a dead lot of things in the river. Yeah. And they don't look what they normally do. Yeah, no, it looks monstrous. They expand and yeah. they smell horribly. Yeah. More so than just not being in the water and dead. Yeah. Ugh. So, people are obviously bummed that they got super pumped about a dead... Dead hog. Dead hog. People hung out as long as they could. They stayed um, well into the night waiting for news of the monster, waiting to see something, and they never saw anything. Um, the next day, there were far fewer people that were hanging around. Interest was waning. People were like, yeah, shit. Yeah, but people were like, oh, okay, I gotta go back. So, so much for back. this. That was fun for a day. I'm over it. Um, the diver went uh, into the river again and actually ended up getting stuck in the mud and had to be pulled out. Believe that. Um, it's like he, quicksand. Yeah, and then he, he tried again. He had um, some equipment issues. I think his air hose actually got hung on something and like ripped out and he had to surface and he was like, fuck this, and called it off. Uh, yeah, I would be too. After so many interruptions. Yeah. I would definitely be like, fuck that. And it sounds like he wasn't even, he wasn't sold on this in the first place. Right. I mean, he was hired to, to look into it, but this was his first opportunity to leave and, and he definitely took it. A lot of people have argued that the most interesting thing that they actually saw in the river that weekend was a, a dead hog? Well, besides the dead hog, maybe second to the dead hog, was a display of Arkansas ingenuity. So there was a local guy <laughs> named David Smith who had debuted his homemade 
dive like we're in. talking today time, because I'm uh, to be serious. No, I'm pretty sure this would be play out the exact same way if this happened today. So this guy David um, made a diving apparatus out of an old gasoline tank, rubber hose, and a bicycle pump. Yep, that's not like Arkansas. from a boat. <laughs> Um, Good old despite the uh, excellence of his equipment, he also did not see the monster. So the weekend sucked. Um, they didn't find the monster they were looking for, and interest really dipped because people started thinking, okay, maybe this was just a hoax, and this Brimlet Bateman dude and the Newport Chamber of Commerce just made all of this up to try to make a quick buck off right. of people. Um, Arkansas will come to make a quick buck. Yeah. I mean, makes sense. Poor state. Yeah. And so over the next few decades, there were periodic sightings, but um, nothing really captured media attention like this until 1971. So in June 1971, a Newport resident named David Jinks reported seeing a large gray creature with a pointy bone on its head. Could be a growth. Yeah. I've seen... I've seen people with, like, horns. Mm. What is it? A subcutane... or a cutaneous horn? I'm talking middle of the forehead, oh. sides of the forehead, top of the head. Yeah. It's very bizarre. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, maybe we could have nails too. Yeah, I, I mean, why not? Could be a unicorn. A river unicorn. I mean, we don't know for real if unicorns aren't real. Do we? No. Why wouldn't they exist in the river? So, a few days um, later, an employee of the White River Lumber Company, Cloyce Warren, produced a photo that allegedly showed this creature you can't see anything is the fucking pixelated and well, black. Well, it's from the 70s, but... I mean, even from the 70s, come on, y'all. My mom's got better pictures than yeah. this. It looks like an alligator. It's consistent with an alligator's back. Yeah. And I don't know what the top of that would... It looks like a dead hog floating in the river. In the river. With a like, long-ass tail. Well, like dead hog and then alligator chomped onto it. Yeah. That's what I see. But um, the, the thing about this is he actually ended up selling it to a newspaper, so was it real, was it not real, I don't know. On July 5th of that same year, the county sheriff actually reported finding super weird footprints along the White River. That's what I'm here for. On Towhead Island, so they were 14 inches long, 8 inches wide, with three toes, or claws. What's anything with three toes or three claws? Anything? Fucking chickens? Birds? Yeah. Dinosaurs? I was just wondering. Uh, maybe alligators. I don't know. I don't know anything about alligators or crocodiles or anything. But I'm just saying, like, I've never heard of anything. I'm just like... Yeah. I'm thinking... Ninja Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. This is three toes. Turtles. And it had some kind of, like, spur or claw on Ooh, the claw. on the back end. So this was on Towhead Island, and Towhead Island is located just north of the area where Bramlett Bateman saw all of the stuff happening back in the 30s. Um, Dude, this is amazing. The fun thing about this is when you're looking at Arkansas cryptids... <laughs> it's really good. I'm all done. The, uh, I don't drink. It's don't delicious. Drink. Don't drink. So... The, the weird thing about the timing here is that the sightings in 1971 started up um, a couple months after the Falk monster sightings started. Mm -hmm. It's so good. <laughs> so, you know, maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe they're seeing that people are once again super intrigued by monsters. You know, I've been on some trails out in the middle of fucking nowhere. I've seen some caves where I'm just like, there's there's a, certain places within these uh, forests and mountains that I'm just like something other than like a bear or bobcat, mountain lion, whatever, has resided in here. I mean, just, I don't know, other things. A Bigfoot? 
you know. Did you see any big feet? Maybe not Bigfoot. There's something out there of a different species that we don't know of. Oh yeah. There For people who aren't as familiar with the Ozarks, there are areas that are super remote, super isolated. I think a lot of times when people think of wilderness, they are thinking of like the Rocky Mountains and we have the exact same places in like Alaska. That. Like there are places where they're extremely remote. Yeah, there's no, no people, one. no no one inhabiting that area. It's definitely possible that there's stuff out there that we don't know about. I genuinely believe that. Uh, sightings continue throughout the summer of 1971, including one by a fisherman and his grandson who had been intrigued by the recent report of these footprints and had decided to go out to the White River in their boat and they didn't see anything for a really long time and then suddenly something hits the bottom of their boat and according to their report it actually lifted them straight up out of the hmm. river. Um, hate it. Hate it. <laughs> I've experienced that. I mean, you and I have been floating once or twice before. <laughs> yeah. We went literally every month of July. Yeah. You understand that? Or every week in July. <laughs> <laughs> every month of July. Every week in July we went fucking yeah. floating. Like, yeah. I've never been floating that much in my life. And like, you know, I ran into a couple of rocks underneath. Um, but they all give like the same effect. Like being mm -hmm. lifted up is totally different than hitting a rock and going up and then back mm -hmm. down for a second. So it makes me just definitely wonder, like, makes me very curious. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I would shit, I would shit my pants. <laughs> I mean, if a rock hits me, I'd ball shit my pants. I get pants. scared. Like, I don't like not knowing what's underneath me. I, I don't like being in lake water. The interesting thing about the sightings throughout the summer of 1971 was that they actually start? They were occurring after a period of really heavy flooding again. Mm. So super muddy, super high water. It was also in this weird cycle of not exactly 40 years because we can do math, but close to 40 years. And that is a trend that you see a lot in cryptozoology where you'll have which is a, new to me. Like, a I'm, bunch of sightings, and then 40 years later, a bunch of sightings, and it kind of happens. I mean, you kind of, it's kind of like that with alien sightings, too. After the um, kind of rush of sightings in 1971, this time interest stays really high. With My favorite thing about this whole fucking story is that interest and concern was so high that State Senator Robert Harvey sponsored a resolution to protect the monster. So for people in a pretty, um, at, this, at this point in time, remote area of Arkansas to have state government come in. That's what I'm saying. And do something. So They legitimately believe something. Yeah, something is happening or they would not be okay with this much government um, involvement in their town. The government wouldn't get involved yeah. <laughs> at all even if they didn't think it something. Yeah. So that's where I'm like, hmm, I kind of wish I was a fly on the wall back now oh, for sure yeah, because for like sure. something, something's there. Something's happening. Senator Harvey uh, sponsored this resolution that argued it was, quote, in the best interest of the state of Arkansas to protect the welfare of the now internationally famous White River Monster from harm or extinction because of the great tourist attraction. They scared. The resolution passed and established a 48 mile riparian reserve, made it unlawful to, quote, molest, kill, trample, or harm the White River Monster while in its native retreat. So if it was a real thing, like I would be literally on his yeah his side, like yes, please let's protect it. Yeah. Then I think preserve, rather than you know capture. Yeah, especially like if it's the only one. No joke. Over time, there have been several theories that have emerged about what the White River Monster might be, um, and they've included everything from a completely unknown 
monstrosity to something as simple as a sunken boat. So there's a wide range here. Um, so we'll go over a few of the most common. So the first um, kind of group of theories is that the White River Monster is really just a giant animal or an animal that's outside of its usual habitat. Or like a deformity. Yeah. Like, you know, like something that's bred that we're like, like it's a, a thing of science, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like an inbred, like, alligator. Like pigfish. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like something yeah. weird, like that's almost like tabloid thing. Yeah. <laughs> the baby pigfish. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the theories is that it's a giant alligator snapping turtle. And no, I will say snapping turtles are a legitimate thing here in Arkansas. Oh. Because I went to pick up my first turtle to save it out of the middle of the street, and it was a fucking snapping turtle, and it hissed at me. Oh, they're uh, they're assholes. I mean, I had gloves on, thank God, but. I am literally questioning the next time I ever help a turtle. Yeah. Yeah. Assholes. They can fend for themselves. And they're, the beginning they were saying it was a big ass turtle to begin with. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. See, I don't know about yeah. that. So the 1912 sighting in Branson described what they were seeing as a 300 pound giant turtle. Dinosaur. And <laughs> It's just a dinosaur. Perhaps. And then in 1971, they were also talking about the pointy bone, so the river unicorn. And that's fucking bizarre. I mean, that literally sounds like a prehistoric animal. Yeah, yeah. Well, alligator snapping turtles have. I mean, they're turtles. They do. They have. They have a shell. They, they have, have horn. little spikies all over them, and, and a nose. Don't they? Like on their like, like almost like a rhinoceros or like other. There's something I maybe. I mean, they're freaking creepy. Mm -hmm. Um, so some people think that it's an alligator snapping turtle. Uh, snapping turtles do get pretty big, but, you know, could it get as large as... Do you realize people? how long turtles live? Like, in eternity. Dude, they live a long ass time. I was yeah. unaware until, like, literally a few months ago. It's, it's just not right. <laughs> it's pretty fucked Sna up. Alligator snapping turtles are, a uh, something of concern. It's some look like something from Mario. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. Yeah. What's the what's the little snapping turtle guy? Wario? Not battles. The Wario is the Mario the I don't the know. bad Mario. Scary. Um Jared knows. Jared will know. Jared! Jared! <laughs> Not Battletoads, that's an actual video game, which is fucking awesome, Battletoads. Jared! Jared! What's the mean turtle in Mario? Mean turtle? What are the turtles the in tur Mario? The, like, fast ones. Bowser? Bowser! Oh, I'm not thinking of Bowser, I'm thinking it's about a, the turtles. It's a King Koop Koopas! Koopa Troopas? Yes! That's what I was thinking of, Koopa Troopas. The turtles that you, like, step on and kiss. Could they get this large? According to my research, the largest alligator snapping turtle ever recorded was captured in the Neosho River in Kansas in 1937. Neosho River in Kansas? That's weird. Yeah. Because Neosho is Missouri. Yeah. I'm assuming maybe it like... Kansas City, Missouri kind of thing. Yeah. Like where it yeah. I don't know. Maybe it terminates in Neosho? I don't know. I'm just making shit That's up weird. now. So, um... I don't know my geography for shit. This creature... Um, that they saw at Branson, they estimated it was 300 pounds, um, and that would be scary because that's a big ass snapping turtle right there, uh, and like 300 yeah. pounds, I'm like, yeah. I don't know if I buy this because I think people would know what an alligator snapping turtle looks like, first of all. Well, I sure didn't. Second of all, there was a huge ass commercial harvest for fucking snapping turtles in the 60s to 80s, again, according to my research. I'm not a historian of alligator snapping turtles. Um, but maybe that would explain why after this point you're not seeing a ton of reports of these giant turtles because they've all been murdered. So the other animal, a giant alligator gar, which is truly stuff of nightmares. Um, this was actually suggested by the U.S. Bureau of Fisheries, um, who made comment on the White River Monster and said, hey, we think it's an alligator gar. They are um, truly a creature who has swum directly out of hell. Um, terrifying. 
I believe my least favorite. I believe all of what you just yes. said. <laughs> the other idea was potentially a giant catfish. Um and, you know, this could potentially hold some weight. Catfish get ginormous. Um, they are same color, shape, you know, whatever of these sightings. Um, other theories, I think, are much more interesting. So they focus on animals that are outside of their natural habitat. The first, a bull elephant seal. Um, now you're just making shit up. <laughs> what the fuck is a bull elephant Googling so, right this second. So this theory was um, given by a biologist and cryptozoologist what? Roy McCall. Holy shit. Who looked at the evidence and decided that, quote, the White River case is a clear-cut instance of a known aquatic animal outside of its normal habitat. Or I think range. I found my next animal. Oh. An elephant seal? Oh, they're fucking cute. <laughs> So, Have you seen its nose? Yeah. So we're gonna talk about its nose. I'm sorry. So it's like your dog. <laughs> it does look like my nose. Look at the boy ones though. Cause they have a freaking schnoz. Elephant seal is like. I an, love that you schnoz because I use that and Kings doesn't know what that is. <laughs> Are I you crying? <laughs> I, love, I love this thing. It's really cute. It is so cute. Animals make me cry. So could you imagine though seeing this? Joker. No. <laughs> I'd be like, what the fuck is that? Who are you? Um, McCall thinks that the monster is a bull elephant seal that wandered into the White River, <sighs> came up the Mississippi River from the ocean, and ended up in the White River. Um, an elephant seal can get really freaking big. They can be 16 feet long and up Holy to four shit. tons. So that's a beefy okay, boy. I can't even, I can't even like, uh, picture that within this room. Like, your dog is big enough. Yeah, like, my dog's huge. I can't think of anything bigger than your dog. <laughs> a horse? Great period. That thing is <laughs> fucking huge. Yeah, a horse. <laughs> but lower to the ground. Yeah, oh so God. freaking seals, man. Uh, many of the characteristics that people were describing of the White River Monster actually do kind of fit with a elephant seal. Um... The gross skin, the tracks, the sound that people have described pretty closely match a elephant seal. And McCall also noted that the horn described might actually be the elephant seal's unique proboscis. What's proboscis? It's schnoz. That schnoz is fucking golden, man. <laughs> yeah. is, I mean, that face that I just saw, like the nose made it. It's cute. So... Potentially, people see the schnoz coming out of the water, and they think it's a horn. So there are two flavors of elephant seal, the northern and southern. Male elephant seals do have a large range, but I'm not seeing how those jokers are getting up the Mississippi River and then getting to the White River. That's what I'm saying. Just uh, It doesn't feel right. My heart's not in it. But we do have freshwater otters. You're thinking it's a giant freshwater otter? I mean, it could have had something with preservatives in it. <laughs> the it hormones much. in the milk. <laughs> one other weird, weird one that I'm also not super into, but I believe more than the elephant seals is a, just a giant sturgeon. Look at this monstrosity. Oh, oh, that looks very much like what we were just seeing in that fucking picture because of the... Yeah. Oh, whoops. Those. Yeah. That's way larger than that. What the fuck is that? It's a little baby. What is that? It's a house. Freak of nature. So sturgeon get giant and they're terrifying. Um, they seriously, I think I'm fucking scared of sturgeon. Now. Like, are they in like river? Rivers? Yeah. Oh my god, no. Yeah. So, um, a <laughs> former professor of zoology at the University of Arkansas, um. Dr. C.S. Dellinger actually supported the theory that the White River Monster was actually just a sturgeon um, because... It'd be like a fucking overgrown-ass sturgeon. I mean... The From that picture that the really grainy old picture. Yeah. Or, Leave. or if it's the only sturgeon in that area, it's an apex predator. It could grow and grow and grow and nothing else is going to get it. Um, so I guess, theoretically... Three herb... Th herbin. Three sturgeon uh, species inhabit the state of Arkansas. That's... 
doesn't make me feel good. Yeah, don't go in the water. And they look like the picture that was taken in 1971. They have these... That back of the the spikes or yeah. spa, I don't even know what the fuck that was. That was extremely familiar. Yeah, it is definitely a, um, a razorback kind of look. That is... Fuck, that's the best thing I ever said. Thank you. Um, it's in my notes. So, uh, it feels appropriate for the state to have this weird looking dude hanging out here. Um, and it, it does fit some reports that it had spikes along its back. Dude, my mind's blown. I don't even know what to think anymore. And sturgeon live in the ocean, but they leave the ocean to, um, spawn in freshwater rivers. So that could explain why a sturgeon, if... I don't feel comfortable. I'm, I'm sitting here researching that. I don't feel comfortable with all this. Like They're huge. They're huge. But, I mean, it, it could potentially get all the way to the White River. If, so, like, what rivers are they most common in in Arkansas? Like, I, mean, I don't know. I don't mean, know. I don't... We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more later. You're going to like the next one, though. So the next theory is that the White River monster is a manatee. Manatees are cute. Yeah, they're cute. They're sea cows. They're nice. So, um... Some people think that the monster is just a manatee that has wandered far, far from home. The Florida manatee grows more than 13 feet in length and can weigh up to 3,500 pounds. Their skin is gray and smooth like descriptions of the White River monster. Unfortunately, they do not have a horn, but... No, um, they look like fucking walruses. Yeah, they're, they're essentially a walrus. They're fucking um, cute. But I love them. They're front I love the white river monster if I just knew it wasn't gonna eat me. It sounds cute. Surgeons are just scary looking, but I love them if it's just what it is. Yeah. I believe the elephant one more than this. Than one. a manatee? Yeah. I believe a manatee. One. Because that nose. That was so distinct that everyone was like Well, there was one report of the horn. But then they were talking about that picture of the back where it had all those little the spiky spikes. looking things on it. Man, it looks like just like that fucking sturgeon. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Can sturgeon and manatees? No. no. <laughs> I mean, no. Why not? One's a freaking, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. One's a mammal. <laughs> one's a mammal and one's a fish. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> It, it simply won't happen. It won't happen. She went to school for smart things. I went to school for dead people. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I'm not a biologist, but I'm, I don't think that... Why can't... Why? I mean, like, weird-ass dogs can breed. Yeah, but they're both dogs. That's true. But, I mean... Okay. Yeah. This inter I'm it in. interspecies uh, relations... I definitely unlikely. don't feel a manatee vibe from this I'm feeling whatsoever. Um, so far, I am most sold on the sturgeon. That's what I'm most sort of sold on. Which is kind of sucks because it's like the least exciting. What could sturgeon breed with besides other sturgeon? There's got to be something. Biologists get back to us. There's got to be something else because it had to breed with something else that's big. An alligator? <laughs> oh God! Could you imagine? No, I don't because I don't know science. And I'm not I think alligators are had alcohol or reptiles and. I don't think reptiles and fish. No, no, they can't. Yeah. The other um, that thing is huge. Class of uh, theories is really sad, and it's just that it's a hoax. That people are just completely fabricating stories about the White River monster. I think science is more crazy than hoax. And I mean, it's just so lame if it's just a hoax. You know? Not a blue hoax. But, I don't. Not when people from the 1920s and 30s are like. What the fuck is that? And they're documenting it. Yeah. There's something there if they're documenting it. Yeah, for sure. Even if it's something later on that we find out it's what it is. Like, oh, that was this. Like, they just didn't know. A surgeon. You know? Yeah. That we haven't said that yet. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Some people think it's a hoax. One story that I think does hold some weight simply because of the characters involved Um was a hoax that was created by a shell digger, which I didn't know that was a job, but... Already making sense to me. <laughs> no, seriously. The, um...
think I'm blonde and Polish and probably drunk, but I don't think I understood what the fuck you just said to me. He sunk a boat, so it's bottom side oh. up, and he's pulling it up. With strings. With strings. So people are coming to okay. check out his his shell thing. So he can make a pretty penny? Yeah. Oh, okay. So he's trying to protect Arkansas. his Arkansas. His Another note in yeah. Arkansas. Capitalism. Um, I don't know. Sure. I mean, I could believe that. I could easily believe something like that. Yeah. The one... The, the, the disparity here. Yeah. <laughs> the one that I believe the most is that the hoax was actually um, to bring tourism to the area. So I can totally believe them making some other yeah. bullshit. Just like Jurgis Springs and they're like medicinal springs. Yeah. Bogus. Not real. Or maybe... Fake news. <laughs> So when, when the monster first uh, really hit the media in 1937, the area had not only been hit by the Great Depression, it also had just experienced super devastating floods. Um, they need money. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, they need hella money. And, and instead of getting on Facebook to be like, we need help. This is the only way back then yeah. because there is no Facebook. Yeah, there's no GoFundMe in 1937. This was their GoFundMe. So they make up these monster sightings. I love being from Arkansas. <laughs> as a publicity stunt to draw visitors and their wallets to the area. One expert has estimated that Newport received $9 million Holy worth shit. of free publicity. In That's gonna be the first time ever and the only time ever yeah. that Newport, Arkansas has ever received. Yeah, for real. And you know what? Like, I kind of buy that. No, I do, I, I do too. I think it's super sketch that immediately the plantation dude and the Chamber of Commerce teamed up to charge a quarter to see the river. So, I don't know. I mean, I unfortunately really kind of buy into... Maybe they saw something weird. Maybe it was a sturgeon. Maybe it was a giant ass alligator. They don't turtle. know what they saw, but they know people want to see it. Yeah. That's what I think. And I'm, I mean, I want to see it too. Yeah. I want to see it. I want to go. Even if it's just a big ass sturgeon, fuck, let me see <laughs> that shit because those things are scary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's scarier than like I a mean, monster. Now that I know that those are in rivers, I don't know how I feel about rivers anymore. And those are my. My getaway. Like, I'm kind of. We already saw snakes last time, and we couldn't go back yeah. in. Like, now I'm kind of worried. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. You guys let us know what you think the White River monster might be. Is it really a Arkansas cryptid or a misplaced animal like a manatee, or is it deformed animal of some kind that's just you know, preying in our waters. A weird uh, interspecies relationship between a sturgeon and an alligator. Like a mammal and a reptile. It can happen. <laughs> Who knows? I don't. Not science. Let us know um, in the comments down below. Make sure that you subscribe so you can be notified when we put this next video out. But we have to do another drink. Yeah. Yeah, it's about time. Okay, here we go. The last bit of that drink was All fucking amazing. Good stuff settled. I don't know. That was like... It literally tasted like horchata. Like, mm -hmm. and I love, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've gone to King Burrito, um, they have horchata. Oh my god, it's so, so beautiful. It's like a, it's made of rice. Yeah. It's rice milk and like cinnamon and... How do you milk rice? Um, so I have, I have a friend who has... Holy oh, shit! He's in grad school. Oh shit, that's him! That's your friend? Yeah! <laughs> So he actually is 150 a pound alligator snapping turtle. Yeah. Holy shit! Alligator, right? their hands are like alligator paws. I'm totally interested in. He held them. Yeah, it's he's it's just held not, them. It's just not right. He understands the power of them oh. and like the girth of them. Ooh. I mean, like, Pearson. what's your fucking last name? Hepperdies. Hepperdies. Listen, hey, look, listen. I'm writing it down in phonetic ways like I do my last name. <laughs> so, Peter Rovich, Hebrides. I mean, like, yeah, I should know this by now. Do you watch the Mighty Boosh? No. You know Old Greg, right? Yeah. That's the Mighty Boosh. It's a whole series. It's what? a whole show. I'm Old Greg. Yeah, Greg. Oh, girl, you, oh my god. I have a bad We need to have sleepovers sometimes. <laughs> we need to have a sleepover sometimes. I'm serious because like I have so much to show you.
Yeah, exactly. That's Hebrides. Hebrides. These nuts. <laughs> yeah.